chat also for the uh, United States of America in lane number three, but really will be two boats in this. Breeze coming around now to a tailwind at the start, a slight tail. Australia's stroke looking very relaxed there, taking a little bit of water, while the British have now for a minute and a half been sitting at the front, waiting for the go. Australia is still sitting there drinking water. OK, finally. United States of America, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, attention. Canadians away in lane number four, a little quicker than the British crew. This is the final of the women's lightweight double skulls. And Great Britain sitting in lane number five. From the top in one, Italy, Greece are in two, the United States of America first boat in lane three, Canada in four. That's the British crew there going away in lane number five, Hester Gunsel and Sophie Hoskin. And in lane number six, we're alongside Australia, McNamara, every hall are in lane six, fourth of the World Championships last year. But the British now have, quite surprisingly, been just uh, dumped out from uh, the opening 100, 150 metres by the Canadians. Big time. The Canadians have always got a length there. Uh, they just shot away. And um, Great Britain almost last at the moment. And that's, uh, that's quite, quite surprising because uh, they were... I don't know if they're sitting there at the front, the front stop there for such a long time was a good idea, because they would have found, found themselves getting very tense like that. They were just poised before the start, just sat there for about a minute or so, probably a little bit longer, and poised ready to go, and you should really just sit relaxed until you call forward. But the Canadians now just stretching out into their rhythm. Remember, this is an event where the lightweight category, the maximum individual weight cannot exceed 59 kilograms and the maximum crew average cannot exceed 57 kilograms well the british have, have, have rectified that poor start they've moved really quite quickly in the second 250 meters they moved well away from australia and now tracking very closely to canada so as we come in towards the rhythm area 500 down into the second 500 this is now where the crews just brave it out who comes down into the rhythm the earliest, just taking a little couple of less strokes per minute as they would have done in the first 250 metres. And it's all about establishing great boat speed, just keeping the boat speed moving along. It has to be said that the British crew are suffering in the first 250 metres now, have started to find some speed. Very important to get out ahead in that early part because you've got the waves, the water coming from either side of you and the crew's other side, so splashing up as they come off the finish. And you want as clear a run as possible. So it's Canada from the United States of America and the British crew currently in third position. USA looking pretty calm there. They, they're at, at 32 strokes a minute and just moving very, very easily and sweetly. Remember that in, uh, in Amsterdam 10 days ago, Great Britain beat Canada uh, in, the, uh, in the championship there and, uh, uh, and they sculled heavyweight as well so they were they were really putting themselves under pressure so this, this that should have given them a really good sense of uh, of confidence Paul Reedy coaches the British double skull done a great job with them over the last couple of years they were disappointed to uh, finish fifth at the world championships last year but they got a bronze medal in 2009 world championships in Poznan big highlight of the uh, development program of this women's lightweight double skull group. So we're coming up towards the halfway mark now. The Canadians looking uh, pretty strong in the uh, leading position by a length, just shy of a length over the United States of America and Great Britain now just sitting in. Those, those markers are wrong there on the top left hand side of your screen. Great Britain are in third position. Now into the third 500 this is now a really sort of important 500 because it's where you push and start to think about building it in for the line if you can sneak a few strokes ahead and get that gap and sort of you know, anticipate when your uh, competition are going to move then that's going to put you in good stead for the closing stages the british crew don't seem to have pushed here once and maybe slightly up on the range stepping it up slightly 
but Canada have definitely moved on on the ranks. Great Britain have just moved through the United States, but they've got still a tremendous amount to do to, uh, to, to catch Canada now. They're length down, and Canada keep, uh, are continuing to move ahead. Um, with Great Britain now just trying to still get on terms with the United States. They, it looked from the angle that they had moved ahead, but they haven't yet. Um, but Canada, well clear and under a lot of pressure from the pursuing cruise now. Lindsay Jenerick to the uh, right of your picture, Tracy Cameron strokes it to the left. You're looking at the world champions in this event. It's how it's done, they move in such unison together. I mean, it's a little bit jerky off the finish. It's not as smooth as it could be, but it's definitely effective. I mean, they've got great boat speed. They've got a lot of layback yeah. in the Canadian team, which is rather typical of what uh, of what uh, is coached in, in Canada. Quite a lot of send at the finish of the stroke. And that surge at the finish of the stroke gives the boat good speed uh, as they recover and slide for the, for the next stroke. It's going to take a big last 500 meters for the uh, British double skull to overhaul Canada, the reigning world champions. The British now is still in third position. That caption remains wrong from what we're looking at across the, the course here. And the British now, though, have to step up here. It's about fighting. And the difference here from a psychological point of view is Great Britain are fighting just to get an overlap. So they're putting so much effort to get their bows overlap whereas the Canadians are just thinking about effort to keep that gap going. So psychologically, they're coming at it from a very, very different uh, perspective. And in amongst it all, the United States of America, Hedstrom and Nichols in lane at number three, looking to uh, spoil the party here for the uh, British uh, double skull. But both crews now really good. The Americans look higher. They're up, taking more strokes per minute than uh, the uh, British crew. The British now really do have to respond. They, they don't look as dynamic. The rate's going up, and you're not getting it off there now. Now you're starting to move it a bit more dynamic as we talk through 250 meters. You can see the speed of the blade going into the water and the legs coming down, but the Americans have responded. Race for bronze, race for silver here, and the race for the gold medal outside, out front. Canada, again, looking back and just looking very relaxed. Canada, 125 meters from the line, not going to be challenged. They just have to keep a little eye out on Great Britain to their left, who now are slowly getting through the United States of America, who are in lane number three. So inside the last 50 meters, nice long strokes coming from the Canadians. The British crew are through the United States into silver medal. They're coming up, almost going to have an overlap on the line. Gold to Canada, silver to Great Britain and bronze to the United States of America. And well, the Canadians look very, very impressive indeed. This shows you just how tight this competition is. The British will be happy though with their silver.